Hey folks, you're watching Reptile Reality. This week I'm going to highlight viper boas. Viper boas are in the Kandoya genus. Solomon Island ground boas, Solomon Island tree boas, Indonesian tree boas. It's all Kandoya. However, they're not all built alike. The reason they're called viper boas is because they're short and compact. They have kind of a thicker body and a really nice triangular shaped head. They really, really look a lot like vipers. They come in a lot of different colors, a lot of different appearances, and I have a kind of a wide range and a nice assortment to show you. So let's check them out. Now here's a really nice one. This is a red colored one. Now these are wild caught animals. When they come in, just like in my Solomon Island ground boa video, I was explaining how the skin is real thick and nasty when they come in. Same goes for these. The best way to judge what those animals are going to look like is looking at their belly, the ventral side. Now this one came in, it was really dark and dull brown, but it had a red belly. And afterward it had its first shed in captivity and it ended up being really nice red color up top as well. Now this animal's wet. They do like to soak a lot. And uh, so when, you know, if you're keeping these animals, you want to make sure they have a nice big water bowl to soak in. And it's been my experience that they will eat rodents readily. Every once in a while, you'll have a holdout for geckos. But for the most part, when you're looking at animals that already have some size to them like this, they will take rat pinkies and mouse hoppers, no problem. And I've also found that the females will eat a lot on a like weekly basis, no problem. And the males are a little bit finicky. They'll only eat maybe once or two, maybe once a month, sometimes once every other month. But because their metabolism is so slow, they really don't need to eat that much. So this is one of my red animals. Now here's another one. This one has me a little bit confused. It has had its first shed in captivity. And all I could see prior to that, and I had all indications that this was going to be a red animal. Its belly was bright red. Now it shed and it didn't take on that red color up top. It's just a regular kind of a normal color on top and it's got this beautiful red belly but I really like it it's actually very different because I fully expected this one just you know to be another red animal it is a young animal it's a smaller smaller in size so it's not fully grown and it could take on some red color uh, some more red color but I don't think it's going to end up being a bright red snake but you can see how these things look they look like death adders I know if I was trucking through the jungle and I happened upon one of these, I would definitely pause before I reached down and messed with it. I want to make sure what it is. Very, very close viper mimic. Now here's a bigger female. Another one, she hasn't had her first shed in captivity yet. And she's just plowing through rat pinkies like crazy. So she should have a shed here pretty soon. Now her belly color is just kind of tan. So I'm not expecting a lot of color to pop out on this animal. So that's just kind of your typical adult female. I have another male here straight out of the water bowl. Like I said, they like to soak. Also has not had its first shed yet, but I'm seeing all this red on the ventral side. So it very well could be a red animal once it sheds can't really tell or it may turn out to be something similar to the other one that I pulled out with the red belly but the difference is, is that on this one dorsally I do see red color the other one is just sort of a slate gray color so this is a little male and they also come in this yellow color now this to me looks almost like hypomelanistic and it has not had its first shed in captivity and again it's wet it came right out of the water bowl so I'm really excited to see what this one looks like when it has its first shed. The belly is tan, kind of a cream color, but dorsally it's very yellow and I don't see a lot of black pigment in these bands. So I have a feeling this one actually might be hypomelanistic or just a nice pretty yellow snake. So of all the viper boas that I showed you, that's basically the full size range. Um, some of the smaller ones are adult males and the larger ones are adult females. 
So that's pretty much what you're looking at when you get into a Viper Boa size-wise. They don't need a lot of space. They like to soak, obviously, and they like to burrow. So very, very easy to take care of. Very slow metabolism. They don't need to eat that often. And they do go off food and will fast for periods of time. So I would just kind of say feed them when they're eating and when they're not, don't freak out. They don't seem to lose weight at all and go long periods of time without eating any food. Now Viper Boas used to be very, very common. They used to be imported in pretty good numbers on regular basis. It's not like that anymore. They don't come in that often. And when they do, it's in very, very small numbers. I don't think it's because the animals are endangered or actually you know, becoming low in numbers. I think it's just that the animals aren't, uh, they aren't highly sought after and they're not high dollar animals. So the collectors aren't specifically targeting Viper Boas. They're one of my favorites. I really like them. I love the look of these guys. I don't work with any venomous. I'm in California, so that's against the law. So something like this kind of kind of takes its place a little bit. So anyway, that's it. Viper boas. The uh, you know they're not coming in in great numbers. However, they uh, they are available from time to time. So if you're interested in something like this, message me. Check out dmexotics.com. You can check on availability there, and you can also email me through dmexotics.com. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.